guys. Okay, so we are going to be making a primitive Uncle Sam set. And using just random fabrics that I have um, been using from Hobby Lobby for many, many years. They will always, these are just always on the cotton wall. We have um, just some burgundy with um, like cream colored stars. And then this one is just a navy blue with white stars. And then this is a, a tick, ticking fabric that uh, just looks a little tea stained. It just looks a little orangey. There are so many really cute different um, primitive style fabrics that Hobby Lobby carries on a regular basis. So I just like to use them. Um, it's better than waiting till seasonal stuff to come in and then maybe not finding what you really wanted. So, which is, you know, kind of, kind of my luck, you know, just when I think, especially when um, I was just, I loved the certain Halloween fabrics that Hobby Lobby carried for so long. And every year I would buy bolts and bolts of them and then they just gone one day. So it was really, really kind of heartbreaking. It's like, geez, I love those fabrics. I wish to gosh, we could get them, you know, somewhere else, but anyway, so I cut out my, my pattern. Now guys, remember there's lots of different primitive fabrics. You don't have to buy these ones. Okay. You don't have, I mean, I've heard a lot of chatter, um, that, you know, their Hobby Lobby doesn't carry them or this or that. I, as far as I know, every Hobby Lobby carries the same thing, but it could be out of stock. It could just be that somebody came in before you and bought all of it. So that kind of stuff, I you know, you can't really control, but there are so many different um, choices in the, the more muted primitive tones um, that you don't always have to do bright, red, white, and blue always. I mean, I prefer the muted tones. It's just my choice, you know, my preference, but anyway, so I've cut this, um, tea stained kind of ticking fabric and we're going to connect these uncle Sam's that I make have some sewing and then they have a lot of glue, a lot of hot glue. So, um, I just, you know, I go by that, my old rule, like we sew what we have to in order to keep the integrity of the product and be able to stuff it and make it look amazing. But then I'll glue everything else. Like why I have no problem hot gluing, you know, fabrics on and embellishments and that sort of thing. So, um, these are basically the only pieces here that we're going to be sewing and everything else is going to be, um, glued unless you choose to sew it. Now, if you, there are pieces on here, if you choose to sew them, have at it by all means, I am not going to stop you. Okay. So I like to put little spats on my boots and I almost forgot to do this. Let's, let's move this out of the way so we can see it. Now spats are just, it just gives, it gives the little, um, what do you call it? The front of the boot here where you can put the, you know, um, rhinestones or whatever you want to use to make them cute. I just realized I forgot to grab rhinestones. I have everything in this little box of tricks over here, but rhinestones are the one thing I didn't grab. So, okay, we'll get some. So what I do with this is I open up my boots and I place it inside. I just sandwich it in there and we're going to sew it in there. Okay. You can just glue this to the outside of the boot. That is perfectly acceptable, but, um, oh, I did that wrong. Let's see. But I don't know. I just like to sew it in when I can. It makes it lay down better and I just, I just like it. So, because, you know, our legs are going to be sideways and they're going to face forward. So you don't need to decorate the back of the boot unless you choose to. That's, 
And if that were the case, then put two of the spats in there. That way they could split and you could glue one down the front and one down the back side of the boot. But that's up to you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. There's, I see no reason to decorate the back of the boot. But some of you might feel like you want the whole thing. You want the customer to be able to see the boot decorated on all sides. And that's perfectly fine. So now, it should, the only important thing now is to make sure you put your spat on this, the same side. So you guys know, I like to put mine together like this. Basically, we're putting right sides together just like that. This part is being folded, just like this part is folded away, this part, this part with the spat is folded away, okay? We're gonna do the same thing with this boot. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna put the spat on the part that we're going to fold away, just like this, fold it away. And then we're gonna put right sides together. Now if it's easier for you not to pin these all together at first, then don't pin them together. But, um, but see now what you're left with are the two pieces that you folded back here and here and here and here. So now you're going to do right sides together. Hold on. I didn't put this up high enough. Sorry. I'm trying to. Oh, yeah, I did. It's up high enough. Okay. So I was thinking it wasn't high enough, but we can make it work. We can make it work right there. Right sides together. And then this one, and then this one will be right sides together. We're just basically flipping them over. Kind of do then when you open this up basically you have both of your halves sewn just like that your seam is on the outsides on both sides and um When you go to flip it around, they'll both it'll be perfect. I always like to add one to make sure these lay nice and flat. Add one more pin right there. Okay. So now you can see, I mean, now we're just going to sew the outside of it. They're lined up. I didn't have to match anything up. They're all matched up fine. And now we just sew the outside and we go all the way to the top. So we have it all. Now, if you, if you are using this particular fabric, this one, remember it, this phrase really badly. It doesn't hurt to go back over areas where it looks like the fraying is a little heavier or you just, you don't want to be too close to the edge on these. So make sure, I would say with this fabric, give yourself a, hef, a heavy quarter of an inch, maybe even closer to a half an inch inseam, all the, or not inseam, sorry. I always say that seam allowance all the way around. Um, not all fabrics, you know, fray like this one, but this is just one that does. The second you cut it, it just immediately starts fraying. And you just flip them around and see how that, see how the spats just automatically come right out with it. Again, you can just, if you forget, or you can, you can just glue them right on as well. It's, it's really not that big of a deal, but. Uh-oh, I see a spot right above this, right where the spat is, I just saw a little area. I saw strings coming through right there. 
So I'm going to immediately flip this sucker back around and reinforce that little area where that, those strings are. Because once I start stuffing it, it's going to put pressure on this little area right there. And I do not want it to pull loose. Again, it's always better to just go ahead and reinforce it um, before you start stuffing it. And then if it's really bad, you have to pull all the stuffing out and you know go back and sew it. Um, most of the time you can kind of fix it with a little dab of hot glue and just kind of make it hide the hole and hopefully maybe put something over it. But like I, said, I like to go ahead and flip them back around the second I see something like that. I'm going to use my dowel to get this all turned right around. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that, that's why. I had the wrong end in there. I had the frayed end that gets caught on felt. Okay. So now we have these cute little legs and the spats. Now this one, I was it got caught in the sewing machine. I mean, this is how it's supposed to be. It got sewn across, and but this one did not. I can flip this around and redo it, but honestly. I'm also just, I'm just, I'm just going to glue it because I'm going to put a piece of trim over this right here or actually a cuff over this anyway. So even though it didn't catch like this one did, um, it's okay. Hot glue right there. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm telling you, when it comes to these attachments, there is no wrong. I mean, you can fix anything, you know, within reason. It, Something as simple as this would not make me take it all apart and redo it again. I will glue it down. I'm putting a cuff across the, t the bottom of these pants anyway. Nobody's going to see that that was not, um, didn't get caught in the sewing. So, or in the stitching. I'm totally fine with it. So now, you just got to stuff it. Just, that's the part that takes the longest So now we have our legs stuffed. So we just push the stuffing in there. And you've seen me do this before. You use your fingers to tuck it in. And then um, you get a nice, straight, clean line to add your tabs to. So you can sew the tabs in just like that. Okay, and now that we have that like that, we just sew across. And be sure to, to keep this, keep, as long as you keep tension on this, you're gonna keep your nice um, straight line here with everything folded under nicely. So there is our, our body part again. And we'll see how that looks. All right, so let's just do our arms and that will be all we need to do. Now, I like to do the arms um, folded over. So when you have an arm in a wreath, if you, do the, if you were to cut this in half and do half and half, you would have a seam on the top and a seam on the bottom. 
So the way I do it is now when we make this, we only have a seam on the bottom, not the top. Okay. So you take your mittens and you put them facing each other, thumbs in the middle, just facing each other, just like that. And you sew across this. Other one. Doesn't matter which one's on top, just as long as the thumbs are both facing the middle, just like that. So now you take it, pull your thumbs out, fold it in half, and pin it. Make sure your thumb and your hand are all lined up well. Like that. And now we just sew all the way around and we stop right here. Always, you know me, I always flip it over to make sure everything looks good. That one's fine. Now with this one, pull the hands out, fold it in half. Same thing. little extra right here. There we go. All right, then you just flip these around and stuff them. So now we will so in our tabs. Now, if you wanted to make these posable, you could put wire in them, but I am not going to for these. We're going to do the same thing we did with the body. Well, actually with this one, because it's felt, you can push it in like that, or you can just sew it on the way it, with the raw edges. And honestly, the raw edges like this um, sometimes just look better. So you just decide. It, it truly does not matter. You can tuck them in and make it, it's really hard when you, you have a small section like this though, it, it uh, really spreads them out. Okay. Okay. So we have our hands and our feet. And now we're ready to work on the other pieces, which do not require sewing. So let me just break this down real quick. We'll get it out of the way. And we'll bring over this little guy because we'll definitely need him. Okay. So 
Now, what we want to work on is the jacket tails, the coat tails. It's really good to have a pipe or a, a lint roller around when you're working with polyfill and felt because it's just caked on there. All right, so these are the coattails. And you can see they're cut kind of oddly. Um, I wanted to make them kind of diagonal almost. So the straight line is up here. This, if you use your mat, use your mat to go on the lines. And the top up here is what you want to be on the straight line. You don't, you don't want these to be straight. These are going to be at an angle like that. Enough where when you put this on here, you have room to glue it. So I'm going to pull it apart a little bit more. So that we're over. You just want enough where you have you can put a line of glue. And that is it. Just like that. Okay, so we have it. It's still straight up here. Everything is straight. So we're going to flip this around. I'm going to put one line of hot glue right down the side. Now, if you wanted to sew this instead of hot glue it, you absolutely can. Just sew exactly what I'm doing right now. Oops, I moved it, so let's get it back to where it was. Okay, so I mean the coattails are super easy. Now all we do is decorate it. Like it's there's not a lot going on here. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to use some standard gimp trim. It's just easier for me. Uh, I don't know where all this is. Um, can't remember what colors. I think I did. I mean honestly, just do whatever color scheme you want with whatever. Um, oh, I kind of like the burgundy over here. Just whatever, whatever trims you have, whatever. You don't have to use GIMP. I know I've gotten several messages from people wanting to know about the GIMP. You, you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to. If you can't find GIMP where you shop at in the color that you want, it doesn't come in every color, then find something else that's a similar color. Trim is trim. I just, I don't want you guys to get hung up on, a, on a, something like a trim when honestly any trim that is coordinating will work and will look just as cute. So, and on this trim, I mean, yes, it looks good. You know, it, it, it highlights it, but it also um, hot glues and seals over all the fraying edges. So it has like a dual purpose. But I'm certain, especially Hobby Lobby, will have um, burgundy colored trims. Maybe it's a sequin. Maybe it's something thinner than this, not as thick. Whatever it is, it'll work. So. Honestly, GIMP is just the cheapest easiest thing for me to find because I had to put place a very large order for it one time. So I just happened to have about, well, I used to have about, I think I ordered 10 rolls of each color. So it's just a lot. Now I personally don't put GIMP on the backside because this, this here is going to be folded around the backside. So that's just a waste. Nobody's going to see it. I just like the back of the, the boots though. If you want to you want to do the back side and have it look like the front then absolutely there's not there's nothing wrong with that I just personally don't do it
And if your customer base is a little more picky, then uh, yeah, you know, I've, my customers, you know, I trained them over the years, but my customers are not your customers. So I really don't know what you deal with. Just make it, I mean, it would actually look pretty if you did put something with a little little bit of bling, maybe not bright, but sequins to me aren't too, too bright. You know, they're just flat little discs. Um, I think something with sequins could be pretty on this. If it was just in the right colors, just make sure it's not, you know, red and royal blue. Try to stick with um, maroons and navies. Can. I think white would be fine though, even if this has a cream color and a white color, just because it's all they had. They used to have this exact same fabric in the navy with the tea stained stars, but they don't carry that anymore. They swapped it over to this one with the white stars. That's all I've been able to find, so, but I still use it. It's okay. Okay, so literally that is the coattails. I know it seems a little simple, but it is, it really is. So now we will come over here and we will glue this spat down. Typically on stuff like this, I only glue around the edge. I don't really glue in the middle. I don't want the glue to seep through and be able to see it through the felt. So um, I just glue it around the edge like that. And I, um, again, if you have a different trim or a coordinating trim, just grab one that works. It does not matter which one. I'm gonna go with this burgundy again, with maroon. I wonder what they call it. Wine. They call it wine, which, okay, that works. This is actually, this gimp is actually a little too thick to use on this small area here, but, um, you know, um, I'm going to go with it. It's just the only one that I had that was uh, a burgundy maroon type color. So, okay. So now we take this. We place our little body on it, lined up here, make sure it's even. It's basically right in the middle. And then what I do is I just, I'm gonna glue, put glue right here where the body is. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top, make sure you don't, you could, mostly because you just wanna stop the fraying of all of that fabric. And I drop it back down on there. Now I can just make these fold around the back side. 
Very simple. And this is why I don't add GIMP to the back side. It just doesn't make sense. But you can if you choose to. So, okay, I wasn't perfectly in the middle, but when you flip it around, I think it'll look better. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. And I'm gonna add, just because I like to, I'm just gonna add the line of this right here, just to cover. Um, everything wants to fray with this fabric, so, and the gimp, the gimp will fray also. So I think this, this will just give it more of a finished front. I don't care about the back, but I want the front to look finished. And you can see how that just kind of finished that off. No, I forgot the rhinestones that go on the boots. I would normally put three dark blue rhinestones. I don't have them because I now I remember I grabbed everything and I know I forgot those. I also like to put rhinestones in the center of these wooden stars. And I'm using the wooden ones because it'll tie into the wooden nose on the Uncle Sam hat. It'll tie in something else we use that's wooden. I can't remember now, but I like to use um, natural, I like to, you know, use natural things if it's on a primitive. I don't want to paint these or I just don't feel like it really needs it. So, but I'll, I'll go and get some, um, some rhinestones because I really want some for there. Too. Okay. So I have some blue rhinestones now. I just went and grabbed some. Now, obviously, you can use whatever you want on this. Um, you can use little stars, like little rhinestone style stars or just little wooden stars. Just whatever. This does give it just a little bit of bling. You know, it is primitive, but I still like to have that look, oh shoot, <laughs> now I'm losing my rhinestones. I have a little bit. Um, but sure, you could absolutely just do wooden. That'd be fine. Whatever you prefer. That's what I love about making attachments. There's no rules. You just find something you like and do it. Um, I see a lot of people making attachments that are just carbon copies of everything that they've learned. And I think, well, that's great at, for, at first, but hopefully you've kind of branched out and done your own thing because there's definitely some amazing creative minds, you know, behind all these. So I know you guys can really do something really cute. Okay. So the cuff is something, it is optional, guys. I don't, I personally probably am not going to do a cuff. I don't like it, which I would just, I would just glue this into thirds and go around here. Um, I don't want that. I want to use the blue again. Um, I just like the way it looks. But see the top of the, the gimp right here is, it's just kind of ugly. Um, gimp always frays. So I like to cover it up. Just cover it up. I don't want I don't want the top of that gimp to be showing. There we 
go. Like that. So you can use the, I think, I think the cuff was in part of the pattern. You can do that or you can just do some trim. Um, really just whatever, whatever you want to do. I like that better. But like I said, if you're going to use the cuff, just try fold it, glue it, put it on there. Simple as that. Okay. Just like that. So it's basically the same thing as trim. It's just with felt. Okay. So our body is done. Now our arms very, um, I don't go big on the arms because they're usually holding something and you know, nobody's going to see it anyway. Just remember our thumb, when you hold something, your thumbs are up, right? They're up. So that's why there's no seam on the upper part of the arm. That's why I, I do that because nobody really looks at the underside, but they might look at the top. So if you're going to glue your trim on, you want the seam of the trim or where the trim, you know, meets together to be at the bottom. Just for aesthetic reasons. Always try to hide your seams together. And I'm just putting the burgundy on because it's blue and then the cream and then the burgundy. It's it really wasn't, uh, I didn't really put a whole lot of thought into it. I'm just adding all the colors to it. So we have that and that, and that is our body and our hands. Oops, we'll put them over here where you can see them. The body and the hands. I mean, it's really that simple to dress them up. Now we're going to do the hat. Now for this hat, because I want this to be firm, I'm going to just do poster board um, on the, the, the stovepipe part. I don't know what that's called. And on the top. And then we're going to use foam board for the brim. Super simple, super easy. Um, I just don't want it. I want it to be um, really firm. You know, I don't want it to be collapsible. Sometimes the um, foam sheet can be very flimsy. Okay. All right. So on your pattern, your fabric is always going to be a little bit longer than your piece of board or foam sheet or whatever you're using. Poster board, foam sheet, whatever. It's always going to be just a little bit longer because um, the wrap, I like to have that nice smooth edged wrap around. Okay. So I am going to glue this one on. I also believe on the pattern, I didn't draw out this big rectangle, I just gave you the dimensions. Um, Y'all, I mean, there's no point me scanning two pages of rectangle when I know you, you can make one. <laughs> I know, I have faith in every one of you that you can draw out a rectangle that is 15 by eight. It's it's not, uh, not too, too complicated. So if you're looking for this rectangle and wondering why it's not in the pattern, well, Really, I mean, the circles I get, circles can be, I use a compass for those. They can be a little more tricky, but a rectangle, I know you guys can do it. So I just gave you the dimensions and that saved me two sheets of paper having to scan in, which just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so we put that part on. I'm gonna grab our blue pattern. And I don't mind if it hangs over a little bit because I'm going to go around and trim the three sides. So, but I want to make sure that all of the poster board is good and covered. I don't want any of the white showing through.
flip it around and I'm not going, well, I'm going to trim this. So I'm not going to cut it off completely, but I, I am going to trim these completely flush with the poster board. You guys know when you're making top hats, remember you always, always cut your fabric a little bit bigger because there is going to come a time when you're not going to line up 100% and um, it's just so much easier to make, just make it a tiny bit bigger, the fabric. That way you have that little bit of wiggle room and all you have to do is this, just go around, trim off the excess and uh, it, it won't alter the look of the top hat whatsoever. Okay, so all I'm gonna do here is, um, I don't need as much of the red one that is there, so I'm just gonna trim it to about, I don't know, half to three quarters of an inch, somewhere in there. God, these scissors are terrible. Okay, that's not going to look nice. Now I'm just going back and um, gluing anything that looks like it could use. Okay. I always like to make sure the edges, right around the edges, if I can run my finger and it it um, folds up like this, then I'm just going to add a little glue to it. You don't want the edges popping up. Even though we are going to put trim over this, um, I just want to make sure we don't have any, any bubbles or gaps that could get, that would be seen under the trims. Okay, I think we're good there. So now I have the, um, the side with a little bit extra facing me. Um, I take this in my hand and I'm going to add glue, pretty good amount all along that edge. I'm going to take, I know you guys can't really see this, but I'm going to roll this under on the poster board, not on the fabric part, but the poster board part. And I, I wish I could had a camera that could go under here, but I do not. So, but I cannot lift it because it will take off on me. So I'm just holding it until it, I'll turn it around and show you in just a second. Okay, so see, the flap with the fabric is still not glued down. I, when I rolled it, I glued it to the poster board, not this little flap of fabric. Now though, now I will glue that little flap of fabric down just to give it a nice finished look. If you don't have that little bit of fabric like that, then you have the cut blunt edge that with all the frayed fabric showing. So I like to do it this way. And then it just, it comes really smooth. You can kind of see a little bit of it there on this one, but for the most part, it's a pretty smooth back. Okay. So now I'm gonna do I like to, when I'm, when I'm doing a, a circle or something like this, I like to glue the um, poster board or foam board, whatever you're using. You can use foam board on the top too, guys, if you don't have poster board left over. So I just like to put this on top of that, just like that. Flip it over, smooth it out. Again, and See how the um, it's a little bit bigger. You can see. Well, maybe see how it's, it's bigger. I purposely made this top part bigger 
so that um, all we, if for whatever reason my top hat part was a little bigger, I mean, I, I just I don't want to take the risk of them not fitting together. So I always make this top part bigger. You just go back and trim it all off. See, all the way around, it's bigger. way easier to trim something afterwards than to try to line something up perfectly. Um, I mean, it's relatively circular. Circular. It may not be a perfect circle, but it's it's pretty close. Let me just hold it. Okay, we're going to let that one cool. I'm going to take this. And I actually would prefer to use felt on this. Um, I'm not a big fan of using cotton on the brims, but this isn't even cut right, but that's okay. We're going to have to cut that off. We don't have a choice. So, we're going to glue it down. I will take an X Acto knife and I will cut that down. Just be sure to get all the way to the edges. The inside, again, not the biggest concern. It's mostly just the edges. Now I could have just cut, taken out the pattern and cut this down, but I'm just gonna cut off everything that I can see. That is white. And by cutting off that little slice, it's not going to make it look different. It still looks relatively the same. So. So hopefully now that I've cut that off, the other piece of fabric will fit it better too because they were cut the same. Yeah, so the other piece now fits it perfectly. Showing. And flip it over and just make sure all the fabric is cut. If you leave the fabric big, it'll bunch up around the um, trim and it'll just be really noticeable. So I like to cut the fabric all the way to the foam board. Now we're going to trim this piece off of this. Jeez. This is why I like to use poster board. because it, I mean, it's a little stiff, but it cuts off pretty easily. Just make sure you don't use your good scissors. trims onto it now before I assemble it. It's just easier. Right, 
which is I find always find the seam, which is right here. Oops. See what I'm doing? I'm just using the same colors that tie in with the, the body and the arms. So when you're buying your trims, you know, you, you may want to buy two. I don't know how, how much of the trims I'm using right now, but you might want to buy two of the little three yard um, rolls. Just, just because you, you never know. It's always better to have a little extra because by the time you realize you don't have enough and you go back to Hobby Lobby, it's not on sale anymore. So um, I just look at when it, when they, when they're 50% off, I always get two. I mean, two for the price of one, but I just always do always want an extra. That's why I have bins and bins and bins of trims that I can't, haven't gotten into yet, which is why I'm using these basics because I just haven't had time to, uh, dig through those tote boxes and organize them. So we are, we just have to use whatever I can find. Okay. I guess I definitely want to lint roll these suckers when we're done with them. There we go. Okay. So you can kind of see how that is looking. Now we'll so go ahead and add trim to the edge of this one because you don't want it. Now make sure you're using a trim on this that doesn't have holes in it. You just, you really just don't want to see the white foam board peeking out if you can. Like this is a half inch um, trim and the foam board is a quarter of an inch. So I know it's going to cover it, but now some trims have holes in them. So be mindful of that when you're putting your trims on and you wouldn't want to put a little tiny like a sequin a single strand of sequins even though the sequins themselves are a quarter inch they're not um, solid all the way so you will see the white coming through everywhere on everywhere you put it so all the way around and that's that's just that just doesn't look nice I've showed you guys in the past how to just do felt. Just take some strips of felt and put it around them if you need to. Um, like this navy colored felt, put it around the rim and then, then put whatever your trim is. If your trim is too small and the white is showing through, then just throw some felt on there first to cover the white and then put your trim over that. And that way it looks, you know, finished and don't have any of the foam board coming through. Oops. Okay, so now I always hold it. Um, Lord have mercy at the glue strings. Holy cow. Okay, so this is the back facing and my seam is right here. So I'm holding it. So when I put it down, my seam will be right back here. I just kind of eyeball it, try to get it centered. And you gotta hold some weight on it for a minute. 
We've got to hold some weight. Okay, so I also have these little um, felt uh, stars that I cut out. Oh my goodness. That I'm going to use. And since I put rhinestones in these ones on the body, I'm going to go ahead and put a rhinestone in each of these just to kind of carry on the same look. Every so often, just reach over and add some pressure to it to make sure it's not popping up. Okay. Now we have the beard, which is optional, of course. You absolutely do not have to add this. This is just something. And we also have a mustache, again, optional. Um, I don't really feel like this is, I don't know. It's cute and all, but it's not necessary. You could just do the top hat, the arms and the body without this, if you don't want to do this. And we're gonna glue this to the underside of the hat. So I'm gonna trim off the whole line of this fur to make it easier to glue up there. I'm just going right across the top. It'll be glued so nobody will see it, but so you can see I just kind of gave a haircut just to that very top part. It just gives it gives the glue some place to hold on to. Because the fur isn't going to be the strongest um, thing to hold it up. So now I have this silly mustache. I'm not really sure what to do with here. I part the fur right in the center right there. And then I take, I fold the mustache in half. And I'm going to put glue right in the center like that. And that is what's going to go right into that where I parted it. You really can't see the mustache against the beard fur, but I still sometimes I like to, I don't always add a mustache. But, so now I'm going to take my wooden half nose these are one and a half inch ones. Or maybe they're just one inch. One and an eighth, maybe. I'm going to stick the nose basically right on the must, Halfway on the mustache, halfway on the beard. And hold it down. Alright, so you can kind of see it. Now, I'm going to glue my little stars on. That's just, just for, I mean, it just gives the front, you know, you can add flowers down here. You can add feather boas. You can add whatever you want, but all right. So now you want the beard. The beard is just about just as wide as the hat. So I like to put it right across. You don't want it up front because you want how do I say this? You you want it to still have the brim in front of it. 
you know, like like a if the if he was wearing, you want it to be kind of where the beard would be if he was wearing this hat, really low on his head. So right about halfway is where I put it. So I put it upside down. Let me set this up here like this. I'm going to glue this and then I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to flip it over. You may not be able to see me do that. And then I'm going to put my hand back here to hold it down. Okay. So it's just a, a fluid movement that I can't really get on the camera that well. So we're going to put glue all the way down the area that I cut the hair low like that. I'm going to pick it up. I'm just going to flop it right over. And then I can't see it way over there. Sorry, I have to bring it this way. Um, and then I'm just going to hold, hold this down. Okay. Ouch! And I'm burning myself here. This is the only way I've ever done the beards on the Uncle Sam hats. Normally on the other hats where I add a beard, like the leprechaun hat, it is hollowed out inside. So I would glue it to the inside around, in, inside the hollow place. But since these are flat on the bottom, I used to make holes in them back when I first started. But I realized quickly that that was just useless. So now when you have it like this, you can see the little beard will hang down. It still has the brim. Um, I always picture it like he's got his, his hat hang, you know, pushed way down over his eyes. Um, you still have a bit of a brim there, you, you know, and it just looks cute. When it's hanging in a wreath, I, I wish I could show it to you, but the way the camera angle is, this just hangs down into the center of the wreath. If this is attached to the top part of the wreath, then this hangs down into the center. And then, of course, with a gap. Now, guys, don't do this. Listen, that, that looks silly. Don't do that. This body part needs to be, there needs to be a gap there. Just think about it. This is the waist. This is his beard. Please, please don't do this. I see so many people that put the head right on top of the body. And I think, wow, that is, that is some crazy placement right there. So you definitely want your body piece attached to the lower part of the rings on your wreath form like that. And then of course your arms will come out somewhere right about here. So don't be, don't be afraid to put this up higher too. If you have something large for him to hold in his hands, if you're going to. So, um, I've seen, I've seen just about everything done with these attachments over the years, but placing the hat directly on top of the body is, he just looks like he got smashed. He just doesn't look right. And then you cover up all your all your pretty stuff here. So anyway, that is it. That is our primitive Uncle Sam. Um, lots of different things you can do with him. And really, is, is this? I mean, the Uncle Sams are probably one of my best sellers always every year. I can always count on a consistent Uncle Sam starting probably back in April and then really hard in May and all the way through June. So, um, and you know, some people will buy them for Memorial Day, which are, you know, it's not just 4th of July. It's, uh, there's lots of different holidays throughout the year that you can um, sell patriotic items. So anyway, that is it. Cute little set. This is a, it's a, it's a lot of work, but, um, I think it's just really, really cute. Um, they go really well in the wreaths. These are these are attachments that were made specifically to go into wreaths. They weren't designed to be dolls or to be anything else. When I first started designing attachments, I made them to fit on a wire wreath form or a unique in the creek board or whatever form you want to use. Um, they're specifically made to go in there. So. That is why back when I first started making them, most people were having to alter things that they bought at the store to make it fit in a wreath. And here I was making things specifically for a wreath. And that's where I really um, excelled, you know, making things fit in the frames. So, but yeah, but again, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that.
do that. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I really can't wait to see what combinations of fabrics and things you've come up with. Thank you.